Welcome back to the Grand Rapids Chamber 2021 Healthcare Summit. My name is Jacqueline Brousset, Vice President of Sales, and I am pleased to be with you today on behalf of Lighthouse and Allaire Group Company. It has been more than a year since COVID-19 was first spoken of, and it has dominated our lives ever since. Businesses have faced a myriad of challenges and continue to seek legal input regarding the impacts of the virus in step with recent legislation. A trending topic of concern for employers is vaccinations in the workplace. The Lighthouse team has dedicated resources to help you navigate these changes, and we've made it our goal to facilitate relevant information so you can focus on your corporate object objective. Next, we're going to examine the topic of vaccines more closely. I am pleased to welcome Molly Williams, Director of Alliance Development for Pfizer, who will touch on how the pharmaceutical company is creating and manufacturing the vaccine. She will be joined by Colleen Kevin Orr, Director of Government Relations, for question and answer following her presentation. Molly, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, it's wonderful to be here today and good morning, everyone. Today, I will touch on the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine program and distribution efforts, as well as the importance of building vaccine confidence. Before I begin, I'd like to read a short statement about our vaccine. The Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine has not been approved or licensed by FDA, but has been authorized for emergency use by FDA under an emergency use authorization to prevent coronavirus disease 2019, COVID-19 for use in individuals 16 years of age and older. The emergency use of this product is only authorized for the duration of the declaration that circumstances exist, justifying the authorization of emergency use of the medical product under section 564B1 of the FDNC Act, unless the declaration is terminated or authorization revoked sooner. I'd also encourage you to review our emergency use authorization fact sheet which is available at www.cvdvaccine-us.com. The, 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 the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine is messenger RNA based and encodes an optimized SARS-CoV-2 full length spike glycoprotein, which is a key neutralization antigen. Let me break that down a little bit. Um, the mRNA vaccine, messenger RNA vaccine, works differently from common vaccines. Significantly, mRNA vaccines do not contain any live virus particles. Instead, they provide a recipe that teaches our own cells to make a part of the COVID-19 virus that is called the spike protein. The idea is stop the spike protein and you can stop the infection. A few things to underscore. The Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine is a two-dose vaccine administered three weeks apart. It is not interchangeable with any other vaccine. It does not contain live virus and the mRNA does not alter your DNA, but is transient and is eliminated from your body. Also, the vaccine is preservative free. If you're interested in the components of the vaccine, you can find that information again in our EUA fact sheet, which is at www.cbdvaccine-us.com. I wanted to briefly explain how Pfizer and our partner BioNTech have reached this point by reviewing key milestones of the development process. Early last May, we began the phase one, two trial of our four potential vaccine candidates. In late July of 2020, we selected one candidate, BNT162B2, and began the phase two, three trial, eventually enrolling over 46,000 participants. We've conducted these trials in approximately 153 sites across the world in six countries, and 39 states in the US. Our trial participants are ages six, or excuse me, 12 to 85. And in the US, 30% have racially and ethnically diverse backgrounds. Approximately 40% are ages 56 to 85. Of the 30% with diverse backgrounds in our clinical trial, 13% are Hispanic, 10% Black, 6% Asian, and 1.3% Native American. On December 11th, the FDA granted emergency use authorization for the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine, the first in our country for a COVID-19 vaccine. On December 12th, the Advisory Committee on, on Immunization Practices, a ACIP, excuse me, recommended that the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine for persons 16 years of age and older under the terms of the UA. I'd like to note that the approach we've taken to in bringing the vaccine to this point on an advanced timeline is not one that cut any corners. 
Our team has ensured that the science is driving this process and that we can meet the FDA's rigorous regulatory standards. The clinical trial has been a continuous study with regular, dis regular discussions with regulatory authorities along the way. This allowed decisions to be made in near real time. What's next? We have just started a clinical trial of our COVID-19 vaccine in pregnant women and are looking to start a clinical trial in children ages five to 11 within the next few months. In addition, we continue to study data related to the emergent variant strains, UK, South African, and Brazilian, and we're encouraged by the results so far. We've just announced a new study of the safety and immunogenicity of a third dose or booster dose of our vaccine. And this will allow us to understand the effect of a booster dose on immunity against COVID-19 that's caused by the current variants. In terms of manufacturing, we've been ramping up this work at the same time we've conducted the clinical trials. That's unusual in our business to make that type of an at-risk investment before knowing if the vaccine would be successful. But because of the urgency of the pandemic, our leadership made the, that decision early on. We operate one of the most sophisticated supply chain systems in the industry with more than 40 Pfizer-owned sites and more than 200 suppliers globally. Based on this extensive experience, we were confident, we were confident that we could be prepared to make and distribute a COVID-19 vaccine once authorized or approved. In late July of 2020, Pfizer announced an agreement with the US government to supply 100 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine once authorized or approved. In late December of 2020, we announced a separate agreement with the US government to supply another 100 million doses. And this month, the US government exercised its option for 100 million more doses, bringing the total doses in the US to 300 million. Worldwide, we now believe we can likely deliver 2 billion doses by the end of 2021. How can we do this? This is based on an updated six dose label in some countries like the US, continuous process improvement and expansion of our current facilities and the ability to add more suppliers and contract manufacturers to our network. As part of this expansion, Pfizer has added new formulation suites in Kalamazoo, lipid production capabilities, both in Kalamazoo and at our research and development site in Groton, Connecticut and fill and finish lines at our McPherson, Kansas site. As such, we've reduced our, oh, excuse me, um, we've also been able to improve our process to double our batch size to increase yield and deploy more efficient lab test methods to reduce release times, which have reduced our timelines from approximately 110 days from start to vial ready. And we're now approaching an average of 60 days. It's almost a 50% improvement. In the US, we've shipped over 77 million doses so far with a shipment accuracy rate of 99.9%. We expect to make, um, available a total of 120 million doses to the US government by the end of March of 2021 to reach 200 million doses by the end of May and make the remaining 100 million doses available to the US government by the end of July of 2021, a sufficient amount of doses to vaccinate up to 150 million Americans. As you can imagine, a major focus of our work on is, is on how the vaccine is being distributed. We're working closely with the federal government on our production release shipping schedules to ensure that Americans receive their first doses on time, source and second doses. We foresee no issues in delivering on the commitments we've made to the US government. Our facility in Kalamazoo is the primary manufacturing site of our COVID-19 vaccine in the US. We anticipate no interruptions in shipments at this facility as we look to scale up our production this year. We're also leveraging two other sites in the US, St. Louis, Missouri for raw material manufacturing and Andover, Massachusetts for drug substance. At Pfizer, we will continue to be as transparent as possible about our supply efforts and work to ramp up our manufacturing capacity to help meet demand and combat the pandemic. We realize that the vaccine will only be effective if people are willing to take it. To that end, we've worked hard to be as transparent as possible in developing the vaccine and we will continue to do so as we move forward. I'm very proud of the leadership that our company showed by pledging last September to adhere to high standards in our work to develop a COVID-19 vaccine. We underscored that science must drive the process and believe that it has. In closing, I'd like to note that at Pfizer, we're so proud of our colleagues who worked tirelessly this past year to help advance a vaccine. Given the urgent need of the pandemic, we're grateful for the tremendous effort made by regulatory officials at FDA, public health leaders at the CDC, and so many other partners at the federal and state levels to develop and implement vaccine distribution programs. 
Thank you for your time. I'm looking forward to questions and as is my colleague, Kevin Orr. Well, thank you so much, uh, Molly, for that. Um, it wouldn't be a virtual presentation if we didn't have an issue, so we lost Kevin. Uh, maybe we'll get him back here <laughs> for the Q&A uh, portion, but what a Michigan story, right? I mean, we are part of the arsenal of health, Pfizer, um, Grand, Rapid, Grand River Aseptic Manufacturing here. It's, it's happening here in West Michigan. And for those uh, watching today, if you wanna help support the effort and get a really stylish shirt uh, about Create Great Community, uh, please visit the Chamber website at grandrapids.org. Proceeds of these shirt sales are gonna support um, those on the front line, uh, doing the mass vaccinations, helping to keep them fed, supporting our local restaurants. Uh, so, so check this uh, out if you would. Uh, Molly, um, can you just give us a little bit of an insight as to what's morale like um, at the Pfizer? Is it like one of the happiest places on earth? Because um, I know these vaccination <laughs> clinics are, but I mean, talk about the mood. I mean, are you guys just running on adrenaline for the past year or what's the company culture like right now? Adrenaline is definitely running a lot of people. Um, it's been remarkable. Um, the day that we saw the video of um, the trucks leaving Kalamazoo in December was you know, it was really remarkable. It has been an incredible experience to be able to see this firsthand. And the colleagues who have been working, I mean, when I said tirelessly, I mean tirelessly. The research and development started in March of 2021, I mean, to get this thing off the ground, and it has just been incredible. To say that um, morale has been amazing at Pfizer really is, uh, you know, we couldn't be prouder. I mean, our scientists, our um, global supply folks, just, you know, everyone at our manufacturing sites, they are remarkable. And, um, you know, I'm part of corporate affairs. I'm, I'm a, a lobbyist. I, you know, I get to see this in a very different light. But one of the wonderful things is to be able to bring this message to, to folks like you and, um, you know, to be a part of it, just a small part of it. Um, it's historical. So, you know, hopefully we will be able to get out of this pandemic. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I feel optimistic. I think my colleagues do as well. And we just really thank you for allowing us to be able to present to, you know, an audience like this today. So now, hopefully as, we can all enjoy it. I'm, I'm a lobbyist too. So I think, you know, we were ranked last on when we were going to be eligible for vaccinations <laughs> in terms of essential workers. But I always say lobbyists are, your job is to tell the story uh, to different stakeholders, tell the story of, you know, the corporation, what you're trying to do. Um, are there any myths or common misconceptions that you like to debunk about, you know, the vaccine, you know, rollout, the manufacturing, the process about it that you get a lot that you could share with our members? Numbers? Well, I think the main thing is I think there was concerns that one, this was done too fast. As you can see, this was not done too fast. Everything was followed. The guidelines, every we followed every single um, uh, every single re requirement that comes from the FDA, from CDC. I mean, all of that was followed. No corners were cut. And it's just that things were done instead of being done, you know, one after the other, they were being done at the same time. So it was able, time was the timing was um, shorter, but everything had to be complied with. There, you know, that's that did not change. I think that's one of the concerns. The other thing, there are some concerns. mRNA is a new technology, but this has been in development for 20 years. So I highly encourage you. We have a website that's just been fantastic, and it really spells out a lot of the, you know, provides information to, you know, especially for people who have questions. Um, my own family members had questions. If you go to Pfizer.com forward slash science forward slash coronavirus, there's a plethora of information there that I think will help people to see, you know, the whole story from development to where we are today. Um, and again, the CBDvaccine.com website forward or dash US, I can put these up later. Um, it's hard to talk about websites. Um, Again, that is another resource. The CDC has fantastic resources for all of the vaccines, not just the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. But you know, you can just Google coronavirus, and you'll get a lot of great information about um, you know safety and efficacy, the studies, the timing. Um, you know, it really can help to to I think just provide people with a level of comfort because I think that's what we all are looking for right now. 
What have you learned through this? What has the corporation learned through this process when it may, and I'm sorry if this question sounds like a what have you done for me lately kind of question, uh, but how might this translate to um, development around pharmaceuticals for other diseases? Um, that what you've learned going through this kind of mad rush to, yeah. to help the world uh, <laughs> crush this. I think there's been a few things. I think one, um, you know, research and development is not something that is done slowly. You know, this has been a 20 year process for BioNTech to this technology that they've been studying. Um, you know, investing in research and development is something that we will continue to do, we've been doing, and it's incredibly important. I think that's one of the things that we've learned. We've also learned that we can work together. You'll see a lot of collaboration. I mean, Pfizer and BioNTech collaboration. Um, we've worked with our other um, Pfizer, our pharma, um, colleagues. And I think that's one of the other important pieces of this is that we can work together. And, you know, this challenge to see where we are a year later, that we're talking about a vaccine that did not exist 12 months ago, has been just remarkable. And I do think it's because we did work together and we were able to use and utilize, um, you know, research that had been, you know, something that had been in the process for many, many years. But, you know, by collaborating the timeline just completely shrunk. So I think that's what we're going to take away from this is that we need to work together, most importantly. I see that Kevin is back too. Yeah, so. Kevin, Kevin I've seen, welcome back uh, to the, the, <laughs> the, the healthcare work. summit. Um, you know, that's just, again, that's a typical virtual event thing um, <laughs> that we're used to. It wouldn't be an event without it. Uh, Kevin, just a couple more minutes left here. Um, anything you'd like to share for, about the Pfizer story um, and getting this, this vaccine out? I think the one thing I would share is just the, the extreme uh, nature of being so proud of, of having so many Michiganders working at our, our Kalamazoo Portage site. You know, Molly may have already said that, but, uh, you know, the, the number of colleagues that have, that have come on board that are working 24-7, you know, they're running three shifts, um, you know, and been able to cut production time from 110 days down to 60 days just with good manufacturing, you know, techniques is, is absolutely remarkable. Um, and they've done so much automation just within the last four to five months, being able to uh, very quickly package things, say coming out of minus 70 degrees centigrade and, and getting things shipped. Um, you know, trucks are dr uh, driving out, you know, every hour. So it's just a, a tremendous a point of pride, I think, for Michigan that um, they played such a significant role in getting the vaccine out to, uh, to the U.S. and then eventually uh, across, uh, across the globe. And you guys both have yours? What's that? You guys have your have uh, gotten both of your doses, yeah. or did you yeah. guys take the one shot from the other guys? No, I have both of my doses. Pfizer <laughs> has has I did. I'm actually tomorrow will be two weeks after my second dose, so I will be 100% vaccinated. So, yeah, no. same here, same here. So. That's good, and I like I like the peace sign, and uh, that's that's probably another little <laughs> Pfizer uh, hand sign. So, um, well, on behalf of the Grand Rapids Chamber and our incredibly grateful uh, business community, thank you to you uh, and your colleagues for what you've done. It's you know. It's science-based, so it sounds weird to say it's miraculous at the same time, but uh, science-based, um, you know, just incredible uh, accomplishment of what you guys have been able to do. So thank you so much for joining us today um, and uh, truly appreciate all your work. Please send all the, the thanks back to, uh, to the workers on the manufacturing line and the scientists. So Thank you.